Hey there, everybody. As usual, I'm getting set up on Instagram, and that always takes an extra second here to get that set up. All right, we are live. It is June 5th. I'm going live uh, about 10 minutes earlier than what I promised you guys, so I'm sure that uh, you'll find this and hop in uh, as everybody starts getting online. Hey, School Creek Packers, uh, join me. Thanks for joining me. So first thing I want to do tonight, uh, we're going to start off um, with a little bit of hobby news. Um, for those that care or follow, SGC came out with a um, special. SGC is running a special for $9 on Series 2 Tops, which comes out, it releases tomorrow. Um, there's not a lot that uh, is going to be in Series 2, I don't think. But uh, SGC has also caught up with their backlog. So they are back down to about a two-week turnaround time if you send them there. So $9 on Series 2 uh, Tops. And they also came out with an interesting special, which I think I am probably going to use, um, $12 for any basketball. That's any, any, uh, any year, any, anything, just $12. If it's a basketball card, SGC will grade it for $12. There's no limits. There's no upcharges. Um, so I am probably going to take advantage of that with some of my vintage, um, basketball, some of my 60s and 70s, because uh, SGC Vintage uh, is very close to PSA in terms of price. And if I don't have to pay the upcharge to get uh, from PSA, um, the little bit of difference on the vintage basketball might actually pay off. So I am going to take advantage. So, uh, hey, Mark. Hey, Joel. Uh, Run 40, School Creek. Zachary, uh, welcome in. So uh, we're just talking some uh, some hobby news. We've got the $9 special at SGC for Top Series 2 and the $12 any basketball card, which I was just saying I am going to take advantage of some vintage basketball and give that, uh, try and do that. Uh, does that basketball SG special include Ice Bear cards? As far as I know, Packers, yes, it does. Uh, they did not have any asterisks. They said any basketball. Um, there were questions to Peter regarding the star cards and they said the star cards are counted. Uh, the tops, uh, some of the tall boys, they said tall boys will count. So I would assume the ice bear cards will as well. So um, if you've got them, send them in. It sounds like $12. We'll get those graded at SGC. So I wanted to make everybody aware of that because I think that uh, some vintage basketball that could be a nice play uh, at SGC, especially with a two-week turnaround time. The other news that I wanted to talk about is a uh, is a golfer. Um, I know a lot of hype and anticipation was around Charlie Wood, Tiger Son, and that kind of fizzled out because let's just face it, Charlie is not Tiger and he's not as good as Tiger. So therefore, I don't know. Uh, there could be a time where his cards become valuable and hyped and all that kind of stuff, but they're I didn't chase any Charlie Wood cards, um, and I don't think I'm going to anytime soon. However, I am interested in this uh, new kid, uh, Miles Russell. He has qualified uh, for a PGA event and placed in the top 25, and now he qualified for another PGA event uh, with, a, with a sponsor's exemption. Um, so he's going to be playing in another PGA event. He has no cards of any kind. Uh, out right now, uh, at least licensed cards. There's some ACO cards, uh, but uh, Miles Russell is somebody for you guys to watch if you're into going where they ain't. Um, he might come out with, they might come out with, uh, might be in an upper deck set, might be in a Sports Illustrated for kids. Not sure, but I think you could watch for Miles Russell if he continues to play like he is. He has the potential to be the next Tiger. He is just tearing up the the uh, junior circuit. Uh, he won the junior um, 
the junior am uh, amateur uh, open here. Um, he's he's winning by six seven strokes. He's just killing it. So Miles Russell is somebody to watch in the future. Another thing. All right. So before I get into some plays for you guys, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is I'm going to present my screen here for you guys. And uh, I just want to show you, um, hopefully this shows up okay. Um, this is the screen for 2020 football cards. So what this is, um, hopefully it's big enough for everybody to see, is five your, your five 2020 players. This is Justin Herbert. Joe Burrow, Jordan Love, Tua, and Jalen Hurts. The reason I want to bring this up is I am tired of listening to people that think what they know what they're talking about uh, and just speaking diarrhea of the mouth about sports cards. It's irritating me, so I thought I'd bring this up. Look at the data and what you're going to find. The reason that I, I said that you've got a couple weeks left and then uh, like mid-June is going to be the end of your football buying uh, to buy raw and to get them graded is to take a look at these. So I pulled this up April 1st to October 1st of last year. Five hottest players, uh, five hottest quarterbacks, the best quarterback class in the last 10 years. And take a look at these, these charts. From April to mid-June, they are essentially all relatively straight across. They, they bounce a little bit up and down, up and down, up and down. But what do they all have in common? When you look at that third week of July, almost every single one has a spike in the last week to 10 days of July. What happens the end of July? The end of July happens to be the national. This is what I'm talking about. After, now take a look at these dates after July. When you look at these over here, some of them will have a spike in early August because they'll have a, um, they'll have a really good preseason game and that's, and that's fine. However, um, most of them you can see right after the national, they fall off a cliff. And they typically don't rebound until you end up getting into uh, November when you can see who's going to be hot and who's, you know, who's going to be in the playoffs. The best time to buy football cards, most of these players, is in October. That's when their prices are at their lowest. All five of these players had dips in October. A few of them started off the season hot the first couple of weeks. They get a small little spike, not as high as the spike that you get during the week of the Nationals, and then it goes down. There was one exception that you can see, and it might have been even an anomaly sale, but it was Joe Burrow had one sale that you can see on there that just spiked like crazy the second week of August, and it could have been an outlier sale. I'm not sure, but... I wanted everybody to be aware of this because when I talk about football, you got to be done sending in your cards to get them graded by mid-June so that you get them back by mid to end of July. You've got to get your football cards and quarterbacks listed the week of the national because last year it shows in this statistic, the last week of July was the highest selling prices for all of these quarterbacks. I don't want to be selling during the preseason. I don't want to be taking my chances and holding into the first couple weeks of the season. I want out by the first week of August. Then I'm going to take a look at who has a tough schedule to start the season. And by the third week to fourth week of the season, football cards start to tank. Now I'm going to buy back in the end of September into October on the players and teams that I think are going to make a run and then I'm going to hold those and I'm going to sell them in December and end of December, January into the playoffs. And I'm going to double down and make money on football cards again. So this is, I, I, I'm, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of 
of this trend so that you don't fall into the hoopla of, of some of these guys that think they know what they're talking about and they just don't. Um, all right, so uh, there's my ramble about uh, football cards. Wanted to make sure everybody was was aware of that. Uh, if you're following my channel, I want to make sure you're making money um, the right way and not listening to some bozo that doesn't know what they're talking about. I am a bozo too. I just happen to be an experienced bozo. Um, all right. So let's get into a couple of plays here. So the first five plays I'm going to give you are baseball. The first play I'm going to give you is Wyatt Langford. Um, yes, I am interested right now in buying back into Wyatt Langford, Jackson Churio, and Jackson Holiday, and here is why. I'm going to give you a little statistic. You just never know what a rookie is going to do with their first opportunity or their first cup of coffee in the majors, all right? Let's take a look at some established players and what they did with their first time around. Take a look at Mike Trout, arguably the best player of our generation. In 2011, Mike Trout hit just 220 in 135 plate appearances with the Angels. Five years later, in 2016, Aaron Judge debuted with the Yankees. He hit a dismal 179, and he struck out 50% of his at-bats. This year, Jackson Holiday went two for 34 after being before getting a option back down to the minors. Here's the bottom line: rookies don't always perform in their initial shot in the mine in the majors. However, the really good players, and I believe Jackson Churio, Jackson Holiday, and Wyatt Langford are this crop of generational talents. These three guys are going to be around for a long time. They're going to have very prosperous careers. They are the real deal. They, they are not ranked this high because everybody was wrong about them. They are off to some, some struggles. They are they may get sent down and come back up. They may be allowed to stay through like Churio is. Uh, Langford got injured, came back. I'm believing in all of these guys. Uh, Caminero, uh, Packers is asking about Caminero. Uh, I do think Caminero is going to get another chance. However, Caminero is out, guys. He he did a, another quad strain. He's out till the middle of July, and then he's got to come back and get healthy in the minors to prove that he can hit before he's got a chance to come up. Caminero is going to get called up again, but it's probably going to be mid-August to early September before Caminero gets his chance again this year. I think that you are going to see Langford have a strong second half of the year. I think that you're going to see Churio figured out have a strong second half of the year. And I think that Holiday, when he gets his chance to come back up, is going to make everybody completely forget about his two for 34 um, before getting option to the minors. So I know that a lot of you guys didn't get the profits that you wanted with these three players. Some of you, like myself, are still hanging on to a few of the cards. I've still got five holiday cards and I've got seven Cheerio cards. Even though I made money on those guys, I do have a couple of them that I held back and I've still got two Wyatt Langford cards. I pulled them back off the internet because I am certain that these guys are going to take off at the end of the year and do well. The prices are going to come back and I'm not concerned about it. So I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. So the first raw to grade, uh, Joel says he's down with the bozos. Is that a boy? Uh, I am your bozo, Joel. Um, 2023 Bowman Draft Chrome First Auto. So the base Bowman first auto for Wyatt Langford is the raw to grade play here. Raw right now, the most recent sale was 194. This card is fluctuating in the high 190s, low 200. So you're going to get this card somewhere in the 185 to 210 dollar range. There have been 34 sales of this card in the last month, so this card is still selling very well, uh, more than one per day. A PSA 9 is 228 bucks, so you're going to get your grading fees back. You're going to be out your eBay fees if it comes back a PSA 9. 
This card gets nine at 32% of the time. A PSA 10 right now sells for $411. This is about the lowest it's been since the card came out six months ago. However, if you've got $225 invested in the card with grading and shipping, and you can and you can almost double your money with him being out injured and just coming back and not performing. Just imagine 30 days from now when this card comes back, if he starts performing, where this $400 amount could go to. If he doesn't and he flames out and the card drops to 300 bucks, you're still not losing money. So this is a play. You want to get the 10s, but I'm I'm all in on the, the raw to grade on Wyatt Langford. Churio and Holiday, I am not, and here's why. Churio and Holiday, their cards are, are too expensive right now on the base compared to Raw, and Holiday's base auto has abysmal, abysmal 30%. It's actually 28.2% gem rate. I am, I am not doing the Raw to grade on either one of those guys. Their, their cards have held too much. I'm not interested in that. The play is with Langford on his base auto. The next player, baseball, I'm going to give you is 2021 Bowman Draft, first auto of Marcelo Meyer for the Red Sox. He's going to, I believe he's going to come up this summer. He's going to get the call. He's awfully close right now. Let me read the numbers to you and then explain the play. Raw, most recent sale. $200. That was four months ago. It was February 21st, the last time a raw Marcelo Meyer card got sold. There are zero sales in the last six, uh, I'm sorry, the last 90 days, zero sales. So this card's extremely hard to come by. So listen to the play. PSA 9 is $122, May 2nd. PSA 10 is $218 on May 14th. So the last raw card sold for $200. A PSA 10 is $218. What is Dr. Crack? Did he lose his mind? No, I did not. The play here is to go out and buy a PSA 10 already graded. $218 for a, a top 10 MLB prospect his Bowman first auto in a PSA 10 for just over $200. This card, when he gets called up, Boston has a good fan base. I can't help but think that this card is going to go to three, three fifty, four hundred dollars $400 um, yet this summer. So here's an opportunity. You don't have to wait for PSA. You don't have to hold your breath on what you're going to get. Spend the $200 and buy the PSA 10. Next card we're going to talk about, 2022 Bowman Draft, first, auto, base. Yes, this is a homer pick. This is my Milwaukee Brewers. His name is Jacob Mizorowski. He is a flame-throwing relief pitcher. He is going to probably get the call this summer because the Brewers need help in the bullpen. He is very young. He is at double A. He set a major league record last year when he made his debut uh, with the Appleton Timber Rattlers. He threw for his major league debut. He was the first player in MLB history to throw his first seven pitches all over 100 miles an hour. This guy is an absolute flamethrower. Here's his problem. His problem is his control. The reason why he hasn't gotten the call yet is they're working on his control. He can he can he can hit 104 on the radar gun with his fastball, and he can hit 97, 98 miles an hour with a wicked slider that's unhittable, but he gets a little bit wild. They're working on it. His walk to strikeout rate is improving every single week at double A. This guy is electric. I don't normally recommend pitchers. But this guy's gonna get the call and he's gonna get some ESPN hype because he's gonna, they're gonna show the radar gun 103, 104. 
100 miles an hour doesn't get you on ESPN anymore, but when you throw every pitch over 100 or your breaking ball is, is being thrown at 97, he's going to get some exposure on ESPN. A base card right now, his base raw auto sells for $30. A PSA 9 sells for $34. So if you get a 9, you are going to be out your grading fees and your eBay fees. So you are looking at about a $20 loss if it gets a 9, which is a 46% chance. So I would buy multiple of this card because it's only $30 because you need some 10s to pay off to make this work. The PSA 10 currently is selling for $100. This is with nobody in the world knowing who this guy is other than the Milwaukee Brewer fan base. When this guy hits ESPN a couple of times and everybody knows who he is, this $100 is going to seem cheap. But at $30, you can, you can ship it, you can grade it, you can pay all your fees and still double your money at, a, at $100 on a PSA 10 without any hype yet. So I'm giving you this guy before anybody else knows about him. This $30 raw is not going to stay there once people find out who this guy is. I love this guy. I bought three of them recently myself. They're all at PSA. I do have one PSA 10 already sitting in my collection. Um, and I'm hoping that I get at least two more PSA 10s out of the three I sent in. The next guy. This could surprise a few people because it is this most recent um, Bowman. And no, it's not Jenkins. It is not Walker Jenkins. We are going after Dylan Cruz. 2024 Bowman Chrome first auto, Dylan Cruz. He's batting about 279 right now. He was batting an abysmal under 200 his last uh, three weeks, he's been on fire. His batting average is, is shooting up. He's starting to hit a couple of home runs. His slugging percentage and his ISO are up. This kid is starting to get it figured out at the AA level. And I would not be surprised if this kid gets the call in August or September of this year, especially if he keeps hitting. I anticipate they may give him a bump up to AAA instead of go straight from double A up to the majors. So they might try him at triple A, see how he's doing. But right now he is raking the last three weeks at double A. He's getting it figured out. And there is a, a play to be made here. His raw card is only selling for $210. That is for a top prospect, 200 bucks for a first auto and it's within the first 30 days, 20, even you know, roughly 30 days of when this product got released. So I don't know why people aren't sending this guy in and getting him graded. There have been 78 sales of this card in the last 30 days. So there's almost there's two plus cards of his of his auto base getting sold in the last 30 days, two of them per day, two plus. There have only been seven graded at PSA. Zero sales. Zero graded Dylan Cruz sales so far. Zero. So I can't quote you a PSA 9 or 10 sale because there aren't any. Four out of the seven have got nines. Three out of the seven have gotten tens. I imagine there's a bunch more sitting at PSA and this pop count is going to climb. However, it's so low right now that even if it starts to climb, it's going to take a while for this to get to be 100 or 200 cards that are graded, like a lot of these other prospects. Right now is the time to do this. I would not wait until July. I would chase this card right now, get it in, get it graded, be one of the first to sell it, because typically the first PSA 10 is going to go for way more than what the other ones are going to go as more hits, hits the uh, market. I would not be surprised if the if the first guy that hits a PSA 10 to eBay, I would not be surprised if this card sold for six or seven hundred dollars, and you're spending two hundred bucks right now plus grading fees. So the nice thing is you can do it on the sixteen dollar special because there are no values created. You don't have to worry about the value on it. They're not going to upcharge you if it gets a PSA 10 because there's no values to go off of yet. So. 
if you can get these in quick and get them graded and get some tens, you can get it done at $16 a card right now. The last baseball card we're going to talk about is 2022 Bowman Draft first auto, Jace Young. Another prospect. I think he's ranked, I don't know, 46th maybe on the MLB top 100. Um, he is really hitting the ball. He is going to force his way up to a Detroit Tigers club this summer. I do not see this guy waiting till next year. I believe the Tigers are going to make the call. I think he could come up as early as July, uh, as late as September, but I think he makes the call this year. Right now, his raw is selling for about $50. If you go back to last September, that card was selling for $150. So the card has really come down as the shine has come off the ball with him. A lot of the shine was because the Rangers were in the playoffs and making a World Series, and his brother, who was a big part of the Rangers, kept saying, my younger brother's even better than me. He's the best player in the family. So a lot of focus went to him. A lot of hype went to him, and his card price has spiked. All that hype has gone off. All the shine has come off, and they're only 50 bucks right now. However, a PSA 9, $29. That's right. A raw for 50 the last PSA 9 sold for $29. So you're going to be out you're going to be out a lot of money if this thing gets a PSA 9 and it gets a PSA 9 at 47%. A PSA 10 is $120 and it gem rates at 40%. So much like the Marcelo Meyer play, skip the raw to grade here and just go buy the PSA 10s. You can get them right now for around $120. What are you waiting for? $120 for a player that's probably going to get called up. He's going to have some hype because of his brother. It's going to be this summer sometime. I see this card jumping up to $2,250, maybe doubling your money in the $250 range uh, by the end of summer. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just a guy with a lot of experience. I am all in. I bought several Jace Youngs. I am ready for the call. I suggest you get ready for the call too. Buy the PSA 10 already graded around 100, 125 bucks and skip the line. Don't worry about whether or not he gets called up and your cards are sitting at PSA and you get caught with your pants down. Just go buy the PSA 10 and get it over with. All right. I've got 10 football plays for you. However, before I give you the 10 football plays, I am going to give you two, I don't know if you want to call them fantasy sleepers or card sleepers, but here are two players that I think are going to make a impact on football, on fantasy, and their card values. I don't have any plays for you uh, on these two. This is just a, a hunch. Call this a fantasy football tip, if you will, if you're playing fantasy football. I am I'm buying in on some of their cards as well. <coughs> the two are are wide receivers. The first one is Deontay Johnson. Uh, you guys probably, if you follow my Instagram, saw here a while back. I just recently bought a rookie ticket auto, uh, really cheap, of Deontay Johnson. Adam Thielen is another year older. He does not have, according to the advanced metrics, he does not have the ability to separate from the defenders like he used to. Deontay Johnson was a top five, uh, according to advanced metrics, top five wide receiver and separation rate from defenders. He's a very talented individual. I know he's going to play on a bad Carolina team, but his, his competition is Adam Thielen. Jonathan Mingo, who completely underperformed last year, uh, may even get cut if he doesn't perform well in preseason this year. They drafted uh, Xavier Leggett, who's kind of a wild card, could could be a good player, may not. Deontay Johnson, they spent some money on him. They like him. I believe I'm going to make a statement here that you, you guys can play this back and you can open my mouth and insert my foot 
uh, come October or November when I, and you can play this back and say, hey, Dr. Crack, you're a dummy. I believe that Deontay Johnson is going to finish in the top 15 wideouts in fantasy this year. I think he's going to be in the top 15 for yards and catches. I don't know about touchdowns because I don't know how much Carolina is going to score. This guy is going to get his yards. He's going to get his catches. He is going to be fantasy relevant, which makes him card relevant. I like Deontay Johnson this year. And the player I like even better than Deontay Johnson might be Christian Kirk. Last year, the shiny new toy was Kelvin Ridley. He's gone. They brought in uh, Gabe Davis. He's nothing more than a, a guy to stretch the field. They draft Brian Thomas Jr., again, a speed guy to stretch the field. So what does that leave underneath? Underneath that leaves Christian Kirk going back to two years ago when he led the league uh, in receptions. You're gonna see you're gonna see Trevor Lawrence go back to the Trevor Lawrence of two years ago when he found Christian Kirk early and often in the games. Lawrence had a good year two years ago because of Christian Kirk. Last year, Lawrence struggled a little bit, in my opinion, because they were trying to force the ball to Kelvin Ridley. And now Kelvin Ridley's gone. You're going to see Christian Kirk come back to relevance. I don't know whether or not um, Christian Kirk's going to be relevant in the card market because he's never sold very well. Even two years ago when he had a great year, his cards only got a small bump. He's not very uh, relevant in the card industry, but I can't help but think Christian Kirk is a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL this year, um, just like he was. Uh, two years ago. So those are two guys to watch. Uh, fantasy football tips, if you will. This isn't a fantasy football show, but those are two football players that I really like going into 2024 season. Um, so Packers is saying it probably helped having Justin Jefferson or Diggs in Minnesota. Um, yeah, uh, that's certainly true. And then, uh, so you must also like Bryce Young. Yes, I like Bryce Young right now. Um, I want all my Bryce Young gone by uh, early August. Um, I believe if he struggles and looking at the schedule, I think he is going to struggle early in the season. I think you could buy back into Bryce Young very cheaply uh, end of October, early November when football prices often dip. But I do like Bryce Young. I do think that Carolina's heading in the right direction. It's just they were so bad, it's going to take them a while to get there. All right, let's do these. Uh, let's blow through these 10 football plays here, and uh, you guys can get to eBay or whatever it is that you do after these shows and try and go find some of these cards. First one is 2020. Um, so the theme, just so you're all aware, the theme of these, the, the next 10 plays I'm giving you, these are all 2020 quarterbacks. They're all Burrow, Love, Tua, Hertz, and Herbert. All 10 plays. I, I think this is the best quarterback class that we've seen in the last 20 years. They're very talented. They get a lot of hype. They're very relevant in the card prices. Um... And 2020 is only a four-year-old product. They've got very good gem rates. When you listen to these gem rates, I did not pick the stereotypical cards that we normally talk about. These You're not going to see a bunch of silver prisms or rookie ticket autos. I picked out cards here that you guys can go that are readily available. You can go where they ain't, and you can make some money on some cards that are much easier to obtain than a silver or a rookie ticket auto. So uh, write these down, go back and listen, um, do whatever you do. But here are the 10 plays. The first one, 2020 Illusions, card number five, Trophy Collection Sapphire Edition, Joe Burrow. Very important to get the Sapphire Edition, not the base, not the green, not the red, the Sapphire. This card in raw condition sells for $15. In a PSA 9, it sells for 50. 
28% of the time it gets a PSA 9, so it's a low PSA 9 percentage. PSA 10 sells for $92, and it has a gem rate of 67%. So three, basically three out of four or seven out of 10 uh, of these cards are getting 10s. Very high gem rate, $15 initial investment for a chance at 90 bucks. And Joe Burrow is going to go up between now and the time you get these back at the end of, you're probably going to get these back in the middle of July, which is perfect timing. As we just talked about at the top of the show, you want to be selling these cards the last week of July during the national. People are buying cards, looking for stock that are going to the national. I am not going to the national this year. Um, I was initially going to go and now I am not. I will be back at the national next year when it comes back to Chicago. All right, card number two, play number two, Don Ross, card number TRJL. It's the, the Rookies. It's called The Rookies. It says The Rookies on the front of the card. Jordan Love. Raw, this card sells for $12. PSA 9 sells for $39. So it covers your... Your shipping, your eBay fees, if it gets a nine, you're going to break even. Gets a nine at 47% crack. A PSA 10 is $71 currently, and that gets a 50% um, 50 rate. So $71 isn't a huge dollar. I think this card's going to go up a little bit again between now and the national. But for a $12 initial investment to come back with 70 bucks, it's a nice little profit. And with a 50% chance um, and Jordan Love being as hot as it is, this is a great card to get into. Uh, I see some uh, some live chat uh, going on here. Uh, me either. Packers, sounds like he's not going to make it to the Nationals this year either. Um, uh, hey, I see Logan just joined us. Uh, hey, Logan. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, it's the Wisconsin crew here. That's that's what I like. All my boys from Wisconsin. All right. So we've got uh, eight football plays left here. The next one is 2020 Phoenix Fireburst card number 104, Jordan Love. I love the Phoenix Fireburst cards. Unfortunately, in 2020, they are not serial numbered like they are later on. Um, but they are still a very nice looking card. And they sell very well. You can get a Jordan Love Fireburst Raw most recently for $11. PSA 9 is $30. So with this uh, PSA special at $16, you can get your, your grading fees and your eBay fees. You're going to wash on a 9 at 32%. A PSA 10 again is $70. And it has a 64% chance of a PSA 10. And that 70 bucks is liable once again to go up by the time you get them back from PSA because Jordan Love is going to be one of the hotter quarterbacks going into this season. Play number four for football is Optic, number 164, Jalen Hurts. This is the Purple Shock rated rookie. Raw, this card most recently sold for $32. In a PSA 9, it sold for $80. So you're gonna pick up, you're gonna pick up about $30 profit, even if it gets a PSA 9, which it does at 41%. A PSA 10 sells for $124. So you're gonna triple your money on a card that has a 42% gem rate. And the card looks good, and you're profiting at a PSA 9. This is a no-brainer, guys. Go get yourself some some Jalen Hurts Purple Shock cards. The next card, 2020 Select, card number 344. It is the field level purple die cut Justin Herbert. This card most recently sold in raw condition for $25. A PSA 9 is $55, so you might profit 5 bucks, or at the very worst case scenario, you're going to break even. There's a 56% chance of a PSA 9. The PSA 10 only has a 36% gem rate, so it's the lowest gem rate of any of the 10 football cards I'm going to recommend. However, 
$25 entry point, the PSA 10 sells for $160, and that's pre-national hype. So that card might get to 200 bucks by the end of July. But right now it's 160 bucks. You can take a $25 card to 160 bucks, and you got a 36% chance. So buy two, three of them, uh, get at least 110, and you are making some good bank there. Next one, Optic. I love this card. This is a color match card. Um, I, I love the card. I have this card in my personal collection, um, but I want to get another one. I'm going to try and get a, at least one or two of these to flip as well. Uh, Optic Blue Scope Rated Rookie Tua Tonga Vailoa, card number 152. Raw, this card is $21. PSA 9 is $44. So again, a 9 is going to break even. The 9 is at a 22% clip. A PSA 10 jumps to $125. So a $21 investment jumps to $125 at a PSA 10. And guess what, guys? This has a 70.6% gem rate. Seven out of 10 of these are getting PSA 10s. $21 to $125 at a 70% crack in a color match of Tua. And Tua's about the lowest he's been in a long time. He always bottoms out in the offseason, and then they start out hot, and they go to the moon. So buy into this card. Hopefully you get a 10, and you can make money with me on this card. 2020 Optic Hollow, also Tua Tongue of Iloa. The Optic Hollow Tua, the reason that I put this, the Hollow for Herbert and Burrow have a much lower gem rate. So this is why Tua is on here, the gem rate and the price, much lower entry rate. You got to pay 100 to 150 bucks for a raw Burrow or a Herbert, you can get a hollow Tua for $25. PSA 9 is 50, so you're washing even on a 9. That's a 34% gem rate. So you're, you're going to bust even 34, 35% of the time. A PSA 10 jumps to 136 bucks, so $25 to $136 and it has a 61% gem rate. So you can you can take an Optic Hollow Tua, 4 to 5x your money, and that card's going to go up between now and the start of the season. Three cards left. Select field level blue die cut, not the light blue, Blue, standard blue, die cut. Card number 344, Justin Herbert. Raw, $32. I just knocked, hang on a second. Knocked my cord out from my computer. I don't need to be going, running out of battery here. Don't need to run out of battery in the middle of this. So blue die cut 344, Justin Herbert. Raw is $32. PSA 9 is $60. So you're going to profit on a PSA 9 at 39%. You're going to make 5, 10 bucks. A PSA 10 jumps all the way up to $160. So you can take a $32, um, $32 card and turn it into a $160 card at a 55% clip. That's a pretty good rate, guys. All right, the last two. We're going to finish up with two Jordan Love cards. There's four Love cards on here because I love me some Jordan Love. All right, the last two cards. This one here is the Mosaic, card number 211. This is the Green Mosaic. This is not the NFL debut. This is his standard card, card number 211. Most recently, the card sold for 30 bucks. This card has sold for as much as $50 in the last 30 days. This card seems to be jumping around. For every $30 uh, sale, there's a $50 sale. So 
watch this card. You may, and I don't want you paying 50 for it. Try and get it in that 30, 35, even $40 range if you can. PSA nine is $52. That's why you want to try and get it at 30. So if it gets a nine, you're breaking even. However, it only gets a nine at 19% of the time. And that's because the PSA 10 gem rate is so high. It's got the highest gem rate of any card that I'm going to recommend tonight. PSA 10 at $125. So a 30, even a 50, if you if you paid 50, you're taking a risk of losing your fees and shipping if it gets a nine. But if it gets a 10, it's $125 currently. This card is going to go up. I would not be surprised to see this card in the $150 to $200 range by the start of the season. This card has a gem rate of 77.6%. That's out of 1,200 cards graded. So that's not a small sample size. This is a pretty good sample size, guys. 77% for a color match green mosaic Jordan Love. The last card I'm going to leave you with is the Optic Preview P304. It's the pink parallel Jordan Love. This card, raw sells for $46. A PSA 9 recently sold for 69. So it's a wash. It's 25% rate at 69. PSA 10 is $138. 72% gem rate. <laughs> hey Mark, Mark's Mark's great. Mark follows Mark is one of my loyal followers, good friend. We talk often back and forth. Mark is telling me that he's got over a thousand cards he's graded since uh, December. He's trying to catch up to me, I think, on how many cards he grades. But a uh, thousand cards he's graded. He's getting ready to sell them all. He just told me the other day. He's like, when I get these last batch back from PSA, I'm going dormant for a couple of months. I got to sell off and make some money. And Mark, Mark is following tonight's show and he says, I got to stop watching you. Just when I thought I was done buying, I come along with these. I, I get it, Mark. I, that's why I'm always buying something. That's why I like doing these shows. Here is a public service announcement, guys. Don't do every card I recommend you will go. You may not go broke because you're going to make money, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. That's one of the biggest mistakes I made when I first started doing grading cards is I'd listen to a show or I'd come up and I'd do my research and I'd try this card and this card and this card. And all of a sudden, you've got $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 invested. And then the PSA starts grading the cards and all of a sudden you got a $1,000, $2,000 bill at PSA and you're like, oh. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I got all this money invested. Now I got to start selling cards and it becomes to where you got your back against the wall and you and and you got you you've extended yourself out too much. Don't fall into that trap. Pick and choose the ones that the plays that I give you on a weekly basis. There's going to be plays every week. I promise you, I'm going to continue doing this. Every week there are plays to be made to make money. Don't unless you're unless you're wealthy or you've got a big uh, pot to draw from. Don't try and do every single one of them. Sounds like Mark might be trying to do the majority of them. Um, I hope Mark makes thousands and thousands of dollars off his cards when he gets uh, gets them all back here. But um, yeah, this every week you're going to hear some of these plays and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I got to try that. And when you do, you extend yourself a little bit further. Don't overextend yourself, but these are some really good plays. So the Optic Pink Parallel, PSA 10, $138, $46 investment, so you can triple your money, 72% chance. And again, I picked these five cards or these 10 cards out of 2020 because the 2020 quarterback class is fantastic with these types of gem rates. And right now, as the graph that I showed you, expect these cards to stay relatively flat over the next 45-ish days, and then you're going to start to see them climbing up as repackers and dealers that are out there trying to get inventory for the Nationals start buying up these cards. So you want to start listing your cards the week 
before week to 10 days before the national put them out there at buy it nows do not do auctions people you're going to get burned on auctions put them out there at a high enough price at buy it nows that you're going to profit well people can always make offers um last year i had a, a repacker contact me says i'll pay exactly what you're asking i'll take them all and i and i sold almost uh, I want to say, I think I sold 52 cards that I had listed all to one person. Made it really easy to ship. Um, who was the optic pink for? That was Jordan Love. So card number P304, uh, optic preview, Jordan Love. So there were four Jordan Love plays. There were two Tua plays. Uh, there were two... Um, two one Joe Burrow... One Jalen Hurts, um, two Justin Herbert, and one Burrow. So that's that's the ten plays. Um, I'll sell you my PSA ten uh, of what? What are you? What are you? Who are you selling? I'll have to go back in and listen. Yeah, go back and uh, go back and listen. Uh, I will. Uh, this was live on YouTube. It was live on Instagram. Instagram will be uh, 30 days or so. Uh, it stays live on my Instagram. Um, what I do is I will upload a, a thumbnail on YouTube and I take down the live video because people have a hard time finding it. So this video within the next 24 hours will get deleted and then re-uploaded as a uh, video that on YouTube that you can go back in and watch. Uh, with a thumbnail that's a little more attractive than my face uh, starting off this YouTube. Um, but uh, yeah, Packers, uh, just just message me on Instagram. Tell me what, what we're working with here, and uh, I might do that for you. Uh, Mark is saying his Skeens Chrome PSA 10s are selling for $235. Uh, so he's got a new slush fund. That's awesome. Uh, you got to you gotta let us know how you, how you did with your... Uh, you said that you had some silver uh, um, Strouds and Wembenyamas coming back. I'm very curious to see how that that worked out for you as well. So, um, as soon as you get those cards in hand and you bust that box open, maybe do a maybe do a reveal on your IG or something. But if nothing else, at least message me. Let me know how you how you did on that. I'm very curious. Um, Packers, this is awesome. You are very welcome. I enjoy doing this again. Um, any guy, you guys ever got any questions, reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, just send me a message. I always respond. Uh, I try to do these every Wednesday for you guys, um, trying to keep you on the on the track of the straight and narrow of some, some plays that you can make some money on and enjoy the hobby as well. So um, same here, Packers, Chad, and Sports Card Radio is, is about it. Yeah. So, all right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to go spend – today was the last day of school for my my kids, so I'm going to go spend some time, cuddle up on the couch, probably watch a movie or something with them, and enjoy the rest of the night. So enjoy your night, guys, uh, and thanks for watching.